Hello and welcome to Mostly Vintage Cameras. This is a Canon EOS 10 uh, and some of you uh, may know that I've already made what you might call a full overview video about this. However, a subscriber has been in touch and asked a few uh, questions about the camera and as I happen to have it to hand, uh, I thought uh, I would try and answer them in this little video if I can. So uh, let me find his comments and thank you so much for leaving these comments. How do you set ISO? I used the function button and dial to set ISO to 1250, but when I release the button in manual mode, it resets to 1500. If I want it to stay at 1250 or any other value, how would I do that? Now, I'm not quite sure that I fully understand what this subscriber is asking, but he's referring to setting the ISO and he's referring to doing it in manual mode which shouldn't actually make any difference to setting the ISO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe some of the basic functions and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll hit the jackpot. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now firstly, we've got a, an on-off switch here and currently it's set to L, which is essentially off or lock. And there's two ways I can turn it on. I can turn it on on these controls or I can turn it on on these controls. Even more fundamentally than that, you can see through this window, I've got a film loaded and that film is a 200 ISO film. It says 200 ISO on the box. It says it here and here and here and here and in very small print just here as well. This is a 200 ISO film and it has DX coding. So when I put it into the camera, it automatically set the film speed for me. There are occasions, rarely, when you might want to change the film speed, but for the vast majority of people, the vast majority of time, I would recommend using the number that's on the box. That being said, when I turn the camera on to one of these modes, and I press this function button, it doesn't do anything. I don't know if you can see the display terribly well. Because these are very much fully automatic, tamper-proof controls. Now it may be that if you're used to using it in the green square and you manually chose to use one of these other modes you might imagine that that's manual exposure mode and you wouldn't be able to change the ISO. Just a hypothesis. But if I wanted to change the ISO it's quite an advanced feature and I'll go into the creative mode as they called it. So I'm in program which is still automatic exposure but now when I press the function button you see I get this ISO function available to me. If I press the function button again I get another function come up and so on and so forth. But right now I want the ISO function. So to change that value all I need to do is turn this dial. And 1250 is a valid option. If I half press the shutter release we'll go back into the normal exposure mode. I can take as many pictures as I like, but if I go back into the function mode, you can still see it retains the 1250 setting. Even if I turn the camera off and back on again, when I check, it still says 1250. So that's how I change the ISO if I want to re rate the speed of the film, but I don't. So I'm going to whack it back down to 200 where it should be. Now if you are changing the speed of your film or changing the film speed your camera is set to, particularly if you're increasing it, you need to make sure that when it's developed you're taking it to a very good processing laboratory that can push process it. You can't take a 200 speed film or a 400 speed film and expose it at 1600 ISO and not correct for that in the developing. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you are going to re-rate your film speed, it has to be for the whole roll of film. You can't take some pictures at 200 and some at 1200 and some at 3200 and some at 50. You either re-rate the roll of film or you don't. Again, to reiterate my strong advice is just use the box speed. However, that's how you change the ISO. The next question, how do you set custom aperture and shutter speed? I know you can use AV or TV, but the camera automatically adjusts one of the factors. 
How can I control both independently? I assume this would be possible with function button in manual mode, but I haven't been able to set aperture there. Okay, so manual mode, true manual exposure mode, is this M symbol just up here. So I just turn the dial until it says M. And if we look at the display over here, this wheel, you can see the shutter speed will change. So I can have a fast shutter speed. I can have a very slow shutter speed. And you can see as I'm changing the shutter speed, the aperture value, this 5.6, is remaining at 5.6. If I want to shoot a different aperture value, if I press this thumb button here, and then change the dial, I can change the aperture. And again, you'll notice that as I change the aperture, the shutter speed is remaining the same. So now I've got full control of aperture and shutter speed. Let's see if there's anything else here. What does the ME sign mean when using the function button? This is the last question this subscriber has asked. And multiple exposure is uh, quite a fun uh, option. So uh, I'm going to go back into automatic exposure. Uh, you don't have to, you can use any uh, of the, you can use any of these modes for multiple exposure. You can't use the pictogram modes. So again, we press the function button until we get ME appears, and then I can dial up to nine. And nine, and ME means multiple exposure. So ordinarily when you take a photograph, it exposes that frame of film and that frame of film is then wound out of the way. So there's a new piece of film here. And I take another photograph, that gets wound out of the way. Using the ME function means I can set this to let's say two. I'll take my first photograph, but the film hasn't moved. You might have heard that you heard the shutter click, but you didn't hear the wind on noise. So now I'm going to take a second photograph. So both of those photographs are exposed on the same piece of film. So just to reiterate, in normal mode you'll hear the, the shutter and the winding. In multiple exposure, you know, if I set two exposures, the first exposure you'll just hear the shutter, no wind on noise. And then the second exposure, it winds the film on. Uh, and one uh, fun, creative, call it what you will, way of using that is, uh, I do it a lot on my holiday pictures because I'm a child. If you put the camera on a tripod or on a very firm table and you set two exposures on your frame of film, you can photograph a scene with nobody in it and then without moving the camera at all, get somebody to stand in the scene and photograph it again. So on the first photograph, the whole scene is exposed, including the space that the person is going to go and stand in. On the second frame, the person standing there. Those two images are superimposed on top of each other. That means when your film's developed, you'll have a picture of the scene with a transparent and ghost-like apparition in the middle of it. There is another, perhaps more creative way of using this. And again, I'm going to go for two exposures. I, if I um, focus on my subject, let's say that's in focus, and I take my first picture, again if I'm using a tripod or not moving the camera at all, I can radically defocus the subject and take another picture. And what this will do is it will give me a sharp in focus image with a blurry out of focus image superimposed on top. And that gives a sort of a a hazy halation type effect. It's called the Orton effect because it was uh, first uh, popularised by a chap called Mr. Orton. And what he did is he'd take two pictures, he'd take a sharp image and a soft image on transparency film and he'd mount both transparencies in the same frame. But with a multiple exposure feature we can um, do it in camera. And uh, we're approaching November 5th and in the UK we're very fond of fireworks on November the 5th but they can be quite tricky to photograph. So one thing you can do, if you put all this together, let's set five frames of multiple exposure. Let's go into manual exposure mode. I'm going to choose a 60th of a second. I can handhold a 60th of a second reasonably well. And I'm going to settle for F5.6. 
and the first firework goes off and I'm going to frame it as it goes bang in the top left corner. The next one I'm going to put in the top right corner, bottom left, bottom right, centre. So I've photographed five fireworks going bang in five different locations on the frame. So rather than one disappointing photo of a picture of a firework, I filled the frame with lots of bright light, which is very cool. It's a good way of photographing fireworks if you don't have a tripod. Obviously if you have a tripod, then you can go for a much slower shutter speed and you get more of the sort of light trail as the, light, as the firework uh, explodes. So that's how to set ISO, manual exposure and multiple exposure. Hopefully, as I say, I've hit the jackpot with those and that will answer your questions. But thank you again for leaving a comment, I do appreciate it, and do have a good day.